Rock it up.
It's been a long, long time Since I had someone, someone new Such a long time Well now I know, yes I know That it's true I need somebody, ooh, somebody, somebody to love. I need someone, oh, someone, somebody to love. I don't need no special things like credit cards and diamond rings. I just need someone to call my own. So that I never ever be alone I need a somebody Somebody to love I said I need, I need, I need, I need someone I said I'll call my own Someone that can Hi, my name's Steve Doc Doherty. A lot of friends call me Doc. Um, I play guitar in the band Eyes, and I was born in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I was raised in uh, Detroit, Michigan. Um, I have never been to Japan, but Jeff and Jimmy have, and they've told me a lot about you guys over there, and it really sounds great. So my expectations are pretty high, and uh, I really can't wait to get out there and rock out some Japan style. <laughs> Kick you later. Japan style. Hi, my name is Jeff Scott Soto. Obviously, I'm the singer of the band Eyes. I was born in Brooklyn, New York, grew up in Los Angeles, California. And I just got to say that I'm really looking forward to coming back and hitting Japan. I've been there four times, two with Ingbe, two with Cooney. And this time it's going to really be an experience because uh, I got my, my real band now and I got the boys that uh, are going to tear up the all of Tokyo, all of uh, Nagoya, Osaka, and everywhere else that we're going to hit. So uh, we're really looking forward to it, I'm looking forward to it, and I can't wait to see you all again. Hi, I'm Jimmy O'Shea. Um, I play bass, and I was born in Chicago. And basically, um, <clears throat> what I want to say to um, everyone in Japan is that uh, to get ready, because uh, we're coming there this year, and uh, we're going to kick major ass. And, uh, 1990. 1991. <laughs> Get with it there, Jeff. That's our singer, Jeff, man. He doesn't know what year it is, but... Um, yeah, but basically we're going to come there, we're going to kick ass, so get ready, and um, we'll see you this year. Hi, uh, this is Ollie Damien from Eyes. I'm the, I'm the drummer in the band. I <laughs> uh, wanted to say uh, hello to all of our fans in, uh, in Japan, and thanks for all your support. Um, I was, uh, for everybody to know, I was born and raised in, uh, in New York, um, Yonkers, Mount Vernon area. Lived there most of my life and then uh, moved out to, uh, to California to form this band. Uh, pain and agony, but no, everything's working out great. We're going to um, come out to Japan and, like Jimmy says, definitely kick some major ass. Heard it's expensive. I want some New York steak out there, so I don't know if you guys have New York steak. Colby beef. Colby beef. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> you guys have McDonald's? <laughs> That's very true. Teriyaki burgers for everyone. <laughs> <laughs> teriyaki burgers. Well, we'll be seeing you when we come down there and, uh, and play and um, come and cheer and yell and scream, and we'll sign a lot of autographs. Uh, band says, uh, you know, happy 91 to everybody, so um, we'll see you when you come into, into Japan and in town. Take care. 
Well, they originally the band was formed by Aldi and and Steve back. Uh, what was it about eighty? 384 or something like 79. that. 79. Yeah. So a few years ago, all they put so put together Jerry Lee Lewis <laughs> <laughs> put together the uh, the project with some local guys around town, and basically Aldi was out looking for the best guys he could possibly find to uh, put together the best project he could put together. Yeah. And um, they the original lineup was called L.A. Rocks, <clears throat> and Aldi had found me after I left Ingbe for the first time in because, 85. Uh, Steve, Steve Perry wasn't available. He was still on Journey, so I had to call Jeff. <laughs> so Aldi gets a hold of me and, and tells, tells me about the project, and uh, I went down to check it out. It was actually pretty cool back then, but it just wasn't really my ball of wax as far as the material was uh, yet. It, wasn't, it hadn't really formed into... Uh, <laughs> hadn't really formed into what I was actually looking for after my Ingve situation. And as a matter of fact, I got a call from them to rejoin the band and do uh, the trilogy tour, in which I wound up doing in 86. So um, I sort of put Aldi and Steve on hold for a while and, and even eventually wound up doing the Cooney album with uh, Cooney and those guys. I'm sure some of you might remember that. And uh, I guess in the middle of 1988, that's when Aldi decided to call me again and give it another shot. By, th by this time, the name of the band was called Eyes. And uh, again, he was still look we were still looking for a bass player and, and trying to solidify the material and everything. And it didn't really take too much longer uh, to, to lock in the deal after we started writing some new tunes and, and getting everything together. As soon as Jeff got on the project, we got very focused and we had a real uh, real good idea on what the band's sound should be. And of course, because of his name and the other people that we uh, started working with, the, people, the band got immediately a lot more attention and it made it much easier for the band to get a deal. Exactly. So we went under the pretense that uh, we were gonna record the album with Marcel Jacob, who was the bass player originally with Ingve's uh, band when I was in the band. And I did an album with him called Talisman, which uh, was only released in certain territories. I think it was released there in Japan as well. And um, <clears throat> Marcel didn't work out for the simple reason is we, we couldn't really keep him in the country and we, we wanted to keep the band together. And it was there were just a lot of problems in getting you know, immigration problems and such. And we all figured out it would be better if we just had somebody that was here home based in the US in which uh, we, we did our endless search for bass players. And uh, I called up Mike Varney up north, Northern California, and he told me of one guy. And it turned out that one guy was the guy that wound up joining the band. That was Jimmy O'Shea. Who, <laughs> and here's who just, Jimmy. Who had just, finished, <laughs> just finished his stint with uh, Cacophony, the band with Jason Becker and Marty Friedman. And luckily, Jimmy was available. He came down, liked the material right away, and uh, jo just joined the band within a couple of days. Jim, Jimmy walks down, walks into Pasha Studios when we were recording the record, and I was going, when am I going to meet this new bass player, guys? Jimmy O'Shea, I want to meet him, I want to meet him. And I was like uh, looking at this guy playing Pac-Man, and, uh, and I go, well, this guy looks pretty cool. I go, his hair's not so bad. He's sort of, sort of like weirdo and sort of weird attitude. And then, but I go, hey, he's not bad. And I go, hey, listen, maybe we can teach this guy to play bass. And then Jeff looks at me and goes, yeah, that's Jimmy. Neil Shea, do bass player. I said, that's great. There he is. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's, that word? <laughs> that's the story on how Jimmy got in the band. Right, and I was a bad Pac-Man player, just for the record. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> for the record. For the record. That's why I got the gig. So then when we started recording the album, um, what was it? The beginning of, beginning of 89, 1990. January 89. 90, was oh, it? 90. 90. Hold on. <laughs> this album's not that old. Time 82, 1986, 85. Yeah, so we did the album. <laughs> we started in January of 1990, and basically it only took us about two months to record with time off here and time <clears throat> off there. Loaded in drums, and it took uh, about seven days to get the tracks, and Steve, the guitar, took the longest. <laughs> <laughs> did all the vocals, and, and basically mixes took about two and a half weeks, and we, we got it out, we got it done pretty quick. <clears throat> it, was, it was a painless, painless no project. I don't know where you were, but it wasn't painless. <laughs> Well, originally we wrote a lot of uh, a lot of the songs we were doing originally were written uh, back in the L.A. Rocks early Eyes days when I joined the band, and I think I contributed to two of the songs myself out of out of the ten that we initially recorded as a demo. 
Um, this was back in 88, and we, we all realized back after we finished the demo that it, it wasn't really something we, we all felt strongly as, as this is the way the new band, the new direction wanted to go. So um, we basically canned a lot of those songs and started from scratch, in which Steve came with a lot of new ideas, and, and we all agreed that the new direction was definitely where we wanted to go. Yeah, I think only three of those songs made it to the to the to the new. Record. I out of the, out of the ten. Yeah, the two ballads, "Don't Turn Around," nobody said it was easy, and uh, "Walk and Fire." Walk and Fire, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah Walk and Fire. So everything else is, was basically brand new. No, "Start Living" was an old one, but we yeah. rehashed yeah, that, it. Rehashed yeah, it. that was yeah. We redid that. Redid it from we actually basically didn't from, record that on that demo. No, we didn't. But no, it was no. it was an older tune, and we just. Uh, we, we put new lyrics and put new ideas, new dynamics into it and made it a much better song. And um, once we got into the studio... Well, first the recording process of, uh, of demoing up everything that we did at our own little recording studio. Oh, but all these... Sure. Yeah. We, Steve would come up with a, a rhythm a, a guitar lick idea, then we'd get together with Jeff Sampler, and the, then we'd uh, sit down <laughs> and, and do all the little drum lines and all the bass lines and put everything down into an A-track. We recorded the record actually very original process by bringing a little A-track in, and then me as a drummer more or less playing to what was going on in the A-track, and then overdubbing from there and elaborating on it. Which yeah, it was, was great. Which it was, was really interesting. It, it went it, faster it, for all of you that way. Mm -hmm. Because he had, he had all the ideas already down on tape, and we, all, he, all he had to do was play play right on top of them instead of just coming out of the blue, which which gave which actually came out a lot better than some of the songs that we did without the uh, eight track idea. Mm -hmm. So it was actually a good a good process of, of uh, recording that we used. Uh, an idea that I'm going to patent and make a lot of money. Well, I think next time we're going to probably try to do a few more live <clears throat> tracks though on the next record where we we're going to do mobile room. recording on a, like the space shuttle and stuff. Yeah. Send you a new process. Maybe we'll do like on a. We're going to record on the Titanic. On the Titanic, exactly. <laughs> Underwater. I thought it was the love boat. The love, <laughs> boat. love boat, that's it. The Titanic, the love right. boat. What's so the Captain what? Friend? Captain Friend. Captain but a, uh, right <laughs> a lot of ideas actually came about when we were in the studio because. Um, Obviously, you're so you're limited with an A track when you're you're just making the bases of the songs, and uh, a lot of the, the things really came alive once we were in the studio and came out a lot better than we originally thought they were going to come out because yeah. the you know like I said the original ideas you can only go so far on the A track and once you're you're up there with the 48 tracks and just going nuts. You're, you're limitless. You can do anything you want, basically. Yeah, the limitations actually made us do different things. Yeah, just it opened That's up the sure. ideas of the songs and it gave us room for more dynamics and, and a lot of different things that we originally didn't <coughs> intend on using. And basically, the band produced the album ourselves. We, uh, we were in there with, with an engineer in the studio, and yeah. it was it was already produced prior to us even going in. Usual, most of it actually, most, it was, of, it. most yeah. of it was the arrangements were more or less. Sort worked of out. everybody sort of produced each other. You know, I, I would sit I would sit in the studio sometimes mm -hmm. with Steve when he was doing solos, and and sometimes Aldi would sit with him, and Steve and I would sit with Aldi while he's doing drums, and most just of, basically most hand in hand. Ran the, actually, you run the machine. Yeah. <laughs> most most overdubs were done with a gunpoint, anyways. Actually, you know. on, on Wired for Love. <laughs> I actually recorded most of those guitars myself. There you go. Yeah, yeah. I, pun I punched myself. So it was, it was, it was a pretty, was pretty self-produced album. He, he, although it was all unified, we did it together. It wasn't like one person was doing his own thing. It was definitely a team project. But uh, you know, don't let anybody fool you. We did it ourselves. Yeah. Uh -oh. <laughs> we spent a lot of time on sounds, basically, because the studio was a little dated, <clears throat> and so we, we really spent a lot of time on getting the right sounds. And but we, we had a good time. There was uh, a lot of energy flowing there, and we just couldn't wait to get this thing done. By far the best thing was Astro Burger. Next, <laughs> that, was, that was pretty cool. But the one thing that came out of nowhere was uh, Somebody to Love, Jeff's little... The acapella, oh, yeah, thing. The acapella yeah. thing. Yeah, that came about as sort of a fluke because I wanted to do a tribute to Sam Cooke, and one of his songs actually, but for some reason, for administration, for administration yeah. rights, uh, I couldn't add another outside song into the album. So... Um, I decided I still wanted to do the tribute, and I came up with something just out of the blue. It took me 15 minutes to write, and basically just went in there and, and did it with, without any real thought behind it, and it came out really cool. I think uh, we're going to use it for that new THX thing when uh, top of like movies come on, we're going to have the little, uh, little vocal thing coming on. <laughs> for the movie bit, I... The main thing we want to uh, achieve with this band is longevity. And uh, as long as we're having fun with this, with this project, you know, we'll continue doing it. Because the, the main goal, obviously, in any musician's idea is to, uh, to be around for a long time. 
And there are a lot of bands that come together and, and fall apart just as fast. And we hope that we can be one of the, uh, the ones that surpass that. Yeah. Like, like an engineer friend of mine once said, uh, the best quote I heard was that fun goes to tape real loud, which I think is, uh, which is very, very important. It's, if people seem to forget what rock and roll really is, it's, it's fun music supposed to just draw emotion, make you feel good. It's not supposed to be thinking and that type of stuff, which is the most important stuff. Yeah, and obviously touring has a lot to do with that as well because uh, our our best forte is playing live because we, we have a lot of a lot of good times on stage. We have fun. We we do a lot of funny stuff, you know. And there's a, there's a lot of seriousness as well. There's just a, Not a, a lot of stuff <laughs> packed into our show, and, and uh, that's that's probably the best part of this. All of this, this. band needs a large stage. Yeah. We're still developing the show because obviously we only have one record to draw from because we don't really want to go back into the past of old songs and rehash them just to fill up time in a live show. You know, we'd rather Steve, did you learn stuff. I'm a Viking yet? Yeah, but okay. you know, it's that 164th passage that I just, it's, I'm having trouble with. <laughs> so I just want you to inject that coffee bean right into your <laughs> There you go. Oh my God. So the main thing we want, like I said, we want to achieve is uh, is that we want to be around for a long time and, and whether we're selling albums for, for two people or selling albums for two million people it's just it's just a matter of how much we can get out of this within ourselves and as a band and we, we just really love what we're doing here we really can't wait to get out there to Japan and show you uh, I think Let's we go. want to be accepted and you know accepted for what we do and you know who we are you know and you know we're not trying to put on any kind of like um, <clears throat> Big image trip. Right, you know what I mean? We're just like doing just, you know, basic, <clears throat> your basic rock and roll, man. Trying to, we yeah. know. Trying to gain, we, we want to gain the respect from our peers as well as gain the respect from our audiences out there. Yeah, <clears throat> on our terms, though. <laughs> <laughs> on our terms. No, no. It's that's, the, that's the key, no, right? I think right. it's on any terms now. Though. We must, <laughs> yeah, we must leave point. Kuwait and leave and, and <laughs> pull out <laughs> on our terms. On conditional <laughs> funny. So what do you, what do you, I guess, what do you want to achieve, man? I don't, what do you want to I, achieve? I, don't want to, I just don't want to work being, at McDonald's again. Yeah. No thanks. We just, just want to be happy on the road, you know, <laughs> even if we're not making millions, but just being able to sustain, <laughs> being able to sustain ourselves and play live shows. I mean, meeting a lot of people, meeting as many fans as possible, yeah. and just, be, you know, having a lot of friends all, all across the country, all, all around the world. Because the recording process is great, and making the albums and I just want to know, do, do they serve And cutting in, in on Japan. everybody's real yeah, good, man, too. They got, so, they maybe if we all talk at the same time. <laughs> <laughs> no, you ever had pizza with hot dogs on it? <laughs> Welcome to Japan. We have corn and shrimp on <laughs> yeah. pizza, too. Uh, Welcome to Japan. It's great. <laughs> So anyway, it's really the audience that we that we want to meet and just get that the immediate. Fans, the thing. fans are the most important thing. Absolutely, yeah. the immediate response. You bet. That's the big high. That's the high. Absolutely. The fans are it. So when you're sitting in the studio a and lot you play of, your track back at ten, <clears throat> a lot of, what are you going to do? Clap for yourself? Where do you go from no, there? I mean, you know, we want to see do? lingerie and roses on and, stage. There you go. and hands up in the air, just screaming our names. There you go. <laughs>